Hello there once again, my ever faithful internet audience. It is I, the Chicken Man. And today, thanks to the EA Creator Network, they have allowed me to play a little bit of Season 11 early. So the background gameplay that you're going to be witnessing is all going to be on the new map in Season 11, Storm Point. And while we're here on the new map, we might as well talk about some of the new changes that are going to be coming in Season 11. So let me bring up some of these patch notes. Now this first one is a doozy. For far too long, Watson mains have gone unappreciated, unnoticed, and unloved. Well, that is no longer the case. Watson is getting a fat buff. Now there's a lot here, so bear with me as I try to convey this message the way that the devs have tried to convey it. Move aside, Ash. This is Watson season. We're ecstatic to finally share some of the long-anticipated Watson improvements. Her win rate and encounter win rate have always been above average. This could be for a multitude of reasons. Her defensive playstyle correlates to higher average placements, Watson mains are die-hard loyalists, and her hitbox has been the smallest in the game ever since Lifeline's adjustment. Regardless, much of the high-level data that we've shared doesn't match perception. Play a few games as Watson, and you'll often find yourself wanting more out of her kit. The goal of these changes is to redistribute her invisible power into the parts of her kit that shape the battlefield in a unique way. We wanted to see what changes could spark more consistency and efficiency in her kit, and ideally ground some of the difficulties surrounding the way her abilities work. We want to enable more active gameplay from Watson players by smoothing out the rough edges and placing fences. Responsiveness tweaks, longer range, and faster cooldowns means that Watson can much more quickly and reliably set up a defensive position or even use her fences and pylon in the midst of open combat in a pinch. So long story short, they've improved the reliability and responsiveness of placing Watson's tactical and ultimate in world objects. Watson can place her tactical and ultimate objects on valid surfaces above Watson's eye level, to a reasonable extent, and general hitbox size increase to compensate for the removal of low profile in the Legacy update. So for her tactical, perimeter defense, increased damage on crossing offense by 33%, increased debuff duration on crossing offense by 100%, increased the time allowance to be hit again by subsequent fence effect by 100%, decreased recharge time by 50%, increased placement range by 50%, decreased the delay between fences shutting off and reactivating after an ally passes through them by 60%, Watson now moves at unarmed speed while readying slash placing fence nodes, and the fence nodes can now be placed as soon as the weapon is readied instead of waiting for the animation to finish. Now on to her ultimate, Interception Pylon. The pylon output has been significantly reworked. Reduce the number of active pylons Watson can place from 3 to 1. The pylon now lasts forever, instead of timing out after 90 seconds. The pylon now has a pool of 250 shields that could be distributed to nearby players instead of effectively infinite shields. Increase the pylon shield recharge rate by 150% and smooth the regen rate. When a pylon is out of shields, it no longer recharges player shields, but can still zap incoming ordnance. Taking damage while regenerating shields via the pylon delays continued regeneration by one second. The UI on the ground and HUD elements now displays the amount of shields that remain in the pylon. Pinging a friendly pylon will now display the percentage of shields remaining in the pylon. Pylon ordnance zapping has been moderately reworked. Ordnance is now zapped when the pylon detects that it would hit any surface within a range and line of sight of the pylon, instead of being zapped as soon as it comes within the range. As part of the changes, current issues where the pylon doesn't reliably zap ordnance, particularly concerning airstrike abilities and ordnance that bounce off surfaces near the pylon, should now be addressed. Now I know that was a lot, but I know you watch the mains out there, you love to hear it, you've finally gotten your buff. This is it. This is your time to shine. Go out there and show the world that you are a Watson main and you can fry. Now then, on to balance changes, weapons, and gear. Starting out with Supply Drop Rotation. This season, the Triple Tick returns to floor loot and taking its place is the G7 Scout. The Scout enters the Supply Drop with its old friend, the Double Tap Trigger Equipped. Already, I know that there are thousands of gamers out there that are absolutely furious at this news, but I am not one of them. I am ecstatic. I am delighted. I finally get my triple take back. It has been 
way too long. I, I really missed the triple take. I'm glad it's back. I know you're not, but I am, and that's all that matters. On to the next. Hop-ups. We got a new one. Dual Shell. Each round loaded into the Mastiff or the 3030 repeater is doubled. So that means instead of having to load 12 bullets back into a purple mag 3030, you only gotta do six or three into a Mastiff. Fully kitted rotation added. Mastiff, 3030 repeater, R301, car, and longbow. Removed. Peacekeeper, Rampage, 345, flatline, and charge rifle. Next up, we got the EVA 8. The fire rate has been reduced from 2.1 to 2.0. I know there's been a lot of people calling for a nerf on the EVA 8, and yes, this is a nerf. I don't know how much it's gonna affect it, but, but it's still a nerf. Speaking of shotguns, Peacekeeper. Slightly increased pellet size. Choke up time reduced from 1.5 seconds to 1.25 seconds. Choked up shots remain tight for slightly longer when exiting ADS. And then we got the dev note. When the PK came out of the crate, we gave it a big sweep of nerfs to make sure that the floor PK wasn't the crate monster we had all grown to know. In this pass, we swung a little hard, so we're giving it a little quality of life and usability pass this season. Look out everyone, the PK might be a problem again. On to the next, Longbow. Damage reduced from 60 to 55. We're walking back a recent buff to the Longbow that proved unnecessary. We wanted to give it some love due to all the recent Marksman updates, but it seems that the Longbow was just fine. Now then, on to one I've seen many people talking about, L-Star. Reduced barrel effectiveness at all rarity tiers, significantly reduced projectile collision size, and the damage has been reduced from 18 to 17. But looking at the note, the L-Star has been a force to be reckoned with this season, so we're taking a big swing and hitting its projectile size and damage in an effort to bring it down a notch. The L-Star definitely was pretty strong, especially in ranked arenas. I know there was a lot of uh, those gamers, they, they didn't really like it too much, so hopefully this will make everything better. Now here, this is a scout. Like we said earlier, it's going back into the supply package. So because of that, they're gonna increase the damage a little bit from 34 to 36, and they're gonna give it the double tap. And since we're already talking about supply drop weapons, might as well mention the supply drop weapon rates. The early game weapon crate rate increased from 25% to 50%. The mid game crate weapon rate increased from 50% to 75%. And finally, the late game crate weapon rate increased from 75% to 100%. Pushing a supply drop in the end game and whiffing on a weapon feels pretty rough. We want to improve the reliability of getting crate weapons out of supply drops throughout all phases of the game. Don't worry, we're adjusting crate respawn rates accordingly to keep them in line. Now here's one I'm really happy about. Hot zone gold loot rates. Increased the amount of gold loot that spawns in hot zones. And with a dev note, hot zones can sometimes feel a bit lackluster, so we're injecting more high tier loot into these dynamic zones to make them more enticing drop spots. I can't begin to tell you the number of times I want to drop hot and there's only like a gold helmet in like a turbocharger. Like why, why would you ever drop there? Why, why would anybody drop there? This change hopefully will make a difference and maybe keep people from landing at the same spots every single game, no matter where the ship's coming from. Now here's a change that probably a lot of people are gonna overlook, crafting. This one's actually kind of big. You get a lot more ammo now whenever you craft ammo. For light, heavy energy, you get 60. Shotgun, you get 24. Arrows, you get 48 arrows. That, that is a godsend for bow users. And then sniper, yeah, that's also a godsend. But let's be real here, you don't find sniper ammo, you don't find arrows. Now, because you're getting more ammo, it's gonna cost a little bit more, so it's gonna increase from five to 10 per weapon. You're also gonna be getting more Evo armor points from crafting, so instead of getting 100, you're gonna be getting 150, and you're also gonna have to pay just a little bit more, you gotta pay 50 instead of 45. And now, the sniper bundle has been replaced with a shotgun bundle featuring the dual shell. Crafting is now definitely more worth to do. Good change. And the last thing that I'm looking at here, enemy NPC updates. Prowler health across the game has gone up from 90 to 114. Storm point in World's Edge, you know, the places where the Prowlers are gonna be. Prowlers on World's Edge and Flyers on King's Canyon now reward Evo points, like 25% of the damage that you do. All damage done to AI now rewards progress to your Evo armor. This is gonna be really nice, especially on Storm Point, cause there's, there's a lot of map, there's a lot of places, 
you're not always going to run into other people, so just being able to farm a couple of the AI really quick for some easy evo points, that could be the difference between life and death when you actually do end up running into a squad. Now that we've gone over the general changes, let's get a little bit more specific. Let's talk about arenas. Supply drop. The supply drop will now land outside the first ring, if possible, and land 10 seconds earlier. Purple weapons now spawn more in earlier rounds. So round one, you're expecting to get one purple plus two blue. Round two, you're looking at getting two purple and one blue. And then round three, you're going to be getting three purple. Supply drop no longer spawns blue havoc or devotion or the gold re-45. Weapon price updates. The Mozambique. Yeah, th this change had to be coming. The Mozambique is, uh, ever since they buffed it, it's been a pretty good weapon. So now it's 150 for the blue and 250 for the purple. P20. The blue is going to be 50, purple going to be 125. Re45. 150 for the base, 100 for the white, and 200 for the blue. Prowler. The base is going to be 400, 350 for the blue, 350 for the purple. R99. Base will be 450, blue will be 300, purple will be 350. And then the Hemlock, the base is going to be 450. Now, my friends, that was pretty much all of the major changes I wanted to go over in this video. Uh, there's some stuff happening in Ranked, but we'll go over that in a separate video. Otherwise, we're going to be here for another 20 minutes. Uh, it's, it's a little bit to take in. But overall, everything's looking pretty good for Season 11. I, I am 100% stoked, my dudes. I, I am super stoked about this. This map is ginormous. It's huge. There's so much to it. And I feel like it's going to lead to some very intense, very cool gaming situations. Season 11 can't come soon enough, my friends. It, it, it really can. Like, I just, I need it. I need it in my life. But that's really about it, my friends. Please tell me down in the comment section below what you are the most excited for upcoming in Season 11. Mine is definitely going to be the triple take. But aside from that, it's definitely going to be Ash. I can't wait to see what type of big brain, big IQ plays people are going to be able to do with their ultimate. I hope you all enjoyed this little patch note reading video while looking at some of the new locations on the new map. Uh, you all know what to do. Like if you liked, dislike if you disliked, sub if you're new, and I will see you all in the next one.